So on we go to, this is race number 13, day three of Henley Raw Regatta, the Double Skulls Challenge Cup. They've got Newark go. Rowing Club and Leeds Rowing Club on the Berkshire Station, and it's Leander Club on the Buck Station. I'm just having a little look at the Berkshire conversion. Station. Look at that, going across. Cowley and Jones have moved right across the water. And they're being told by the umpire to get back to the Berkshire station. Oh, that's uh, a, some uh, steering. wayward steering there. Cowley and Jones. It's not what they were after. And that's just uh, take some pace out the boat. Yeah, it makes on. it hard to get into your rhythm. I mean, they've obviously taken a bit of control. They've really gone for the lead. The umpire's the gone steering for the flag is erratic. Again. The steering is erratic. They've got clear water, which is brave thing to have done and the question is now how hard are they really front loaded this race and how much is our king and Fringham going to be affected by this crew now giving him a bit of wash ashley cowley and daniel jones in the newark rowing club and leeds rowing club men's double you can see at the top of the picture on the berkshire station have stretched ahead but how much has it cost them and this is a sort of race in contrast to the apes that we saw a few minutes ago where the lead can transfer quite quickly, yeah. especially if you've expended too much energy back at Temple Island. You get down to Remenham Club and Stewards and you might pay the cost. Yeah, you see the way they went off, it was really quite frantic, the steering issues going around, blades digging. They really were attacking at 110%. You just wonder if you go that hard, how expensive is that going to be? And here, still maintaining the lead, clear water, and we'll see what King and Brigham, see what kind of, how much fuel they've got in the tank, but they can actually just peg back slowly, slowly. Yeah, Matt Wickham and Alex King in the Leander boat. They look to me like they're keeping pretty calm and they've actually rode a much steadier race, although they are down by what, a length and a bit maybe at the moment. It does look like it's just going to slowly change over, doesn't it? That and actually not so slowly now, suddenly. Yeah, suddenly now we're going to be level as they come up to Upper Thames. What do you call it? The Remnant Club push? Yeah, well, there's nobody from Remnant here, so there'll be no <laughs> cheers for anybody this race. No, but there's definitely been off the push. Leander crew. It's the same moment in the race, isn't it, that it we is. talked about? It is. And, and exactly what I was anticipating there. Leander just looked so chilled, and so under control, even though they were, what, two lengths down at one stage? They were, and, that, and I guess having that confidence to know that we're going to row our fastest race from A to B, and the other crew is going to do whatever tactics they can, and if they're faster, they're faster, otherwise not. And here they've done, they've just rode their own race, got into their own rhythm and be patient and let um, Cowley and Jones do their thing. You talk about the confidence at the Ander Club boat with Brigham and King, but on the flip side, you're sitting in the other boat and you've given it everything for the uh, first three quarters of this race and you've been steering all over the place and have been giving it full throttle. That moment when the other boat drifts past you, it's been quite dispiriting. It's quite hard. You still you try and work as hard as you can, and if basically your, your hardest effort it makes no difference to the impact. And you can see here, King and Brigham just now coming through almost the length as they come into the general enclosure. It'd be hard to see what Cowley and Jones could do to come back, but they're tenacious, so you see what they do, see so they can jump the rate up and attack them again. And Leander Club just behind us, isn't it, the clubhouse? And you think, well, they must have rehearsed that so many times over the uh, over the years, over the recent months and weeks, where they can just change gear uh, on demand like that at that point on the water. And yeah. Know exactly what each other was thinking. And you, and you wonder these guys will have the freedom now to decide, do we actually put an effort in now to really make it a bigger margin? Or do we think like, well, we know what we're doing is working. We're going to win by... We don't care what the margin is, we're just going to skull within ourselves and prepare for the next round. But you can see Cowley and Jones here, really, they're not giving up, the stroke rate's going up and they are attacking back. A quick look there from the bowman, Ashley Cowley, to see if he can have a tack back. The umpire's getting busy again, this time it's going to be Leander who are called upon. Right in front of Stewart, so not too far to go, a couple of hundred metres of the race left and Leander, just the one intervention from the umpire in their direction but otherwise a faultless race, faultless performance. A yeah, very mature performance there. I mean they hadn't won easily but they were composed and just rode their own race. They probably won it more easily than the margin would suggest. Is that fair? Yeah I think that's probably fair. Over the line they come then, Leander Club 
It's Matt Brigham and Alex King beating Ashley Cowley and Daniel Jones, Newark Rowing Club and Leeds Rowing Club by a couple of lengths.